and reselling, it's not a matter of if you're gonna make a bad buy, it's a matter of when you're gonna make the bad buy. How are you going to be able to recover from it? How are you gonna be able to still make it profitable? Or how are you going to learn from it? Those are the things that you should think about when you realize that you've made a bad buy. And the reason why I wanted to share and create this video is because of the fact that I did that. I recently made a huge $200 bad buy at an estate sale. I got so excited thinking that I was going to make an amazing $1,000 Amazon FBA passive income just in time for the holidays. When I got all of the books home that I had purchased at this estate sale, I realized that while I had screened the cover and the title page and checked to see if there was a first edition, I did not screen like the first 10 pages. And I realized that the late owner had written their name and date in every single book. And so I was no longer able to sell these books as new on Amazon. I was crestfallen when I realized that because now it was something that was going to be a, a, an easy set it and forget it income is now going to turn from a passive income into a laborious and very active income. I'm, I'm padding these because these are the books that I have listed so far. My way to try to recover from that was I'm going to just have to knuckle down and list everything. And so I started that process. I have 124 books behind me right now out of the 300 I purchased for $200. And I have a kitchen renovation next month and I'm still not done with the book. So last week I started to get stressed and worried that I, I, there was no way I was gonna be able to get everything done before this remodel and out of the way. And so then I started to try to cross list things onto Facebook Marketplace to see if maybe I could move them more there and I wasn't getting any bites there, just like I'm not getting any bites on eBay. And so what ended up happening is I was taking a different route to a job site and I rediscovered Second and Charles, which is a buy, sell, trade media store, primarily books, but they also do video games, nerdy novelties and music, as well as consoles, video game consoles. And I was like, I wonder if they would buy these books. And the great answer is yes. And the better answer is that I actually have two options that I can take. Uh, I, I I went in there, gave them initial 60 books that I had not listed yet, and they took, bless them, every single one. <laughs> and I had the option to either take cash, which would actually have me net five to 10 cents per book. Um, so I could either immediately get my money back, plus like a little bit for my time and energy, and, or I could get store credit and get, you know, double my initial investment back. And so I'm going to take that initial, like doubling my initial investment back because I can buy more profitable items there. Just like people here on YouTube that will, you know, buy stuff at the bins and then take it to Buffalo Exchange and like instantly get their money back and then some, like it's that kind of deal. I'm gonna just take the credit so I can hopefully turn it into more profitable items like this. I paid three dollars for this. I'm gonna be able to review this on my, read this, review it on my book channel, which I will link up above if you're interested. And I could sell this for double what I paid for it if I decide I don't like the story enough to keep it. So I am going to turn this into a multiple win. I'm gonna turn it into books that I actually want to read or take that store credit and use it for the upcoming holiday season as gifts for uh, my also just as nerdy partner or my just as also nerdy friends. And if I hadn't gone down that route, I'm, I would have just been very distraught and I might have just gone ahead and donated everything and just said whatever. But now I found a solution to my problem. I have learned a lesson, which is definitely to screen things more carefully. I have found a way to make it profitable and I'm very grateful. I have also had issues where I've bought things that are stained or I got them back and I found a stain. And so then I have learned how to get those stains out 
you know, that might not be something that you have the ability to do because you live in an apartment or you don't have a washer and dryer hookup in your, in your apartment. Or it could be that you get back and you find out that there is a tear underneath here. Oh, I've learned how to embroider. <laughs> I've learned how to darn and I've learned how to sew in order to fix those things. Now that might not be something you have any interest in, but I have learned how to fix my mistakes in order to make those investments still work for me and still make sure that I can turn a profit. Uh, some, some stores will allow you to do returns, which is amazing. None of the stores in my area allow for that at all, uh, except for maybe the restore and that's if you buy like something large, like a refrigerator or something. So if that's an option in your area, I would definitely buy predominantly from those places. So that way, if something is wrong with it, you can just return it and you just lost the time in buying it and taking it back. I've, I've learned so much in order to try to make, minimize my risk in my business. And also it's a great way for you to learn new platforms. So something that might not sell at on Poshmark might totally sell on eBay because it has a, a larger target audience or something that hasn't has been listed on eBay for forever. Uh, for example, you have this beautiful like granny style cardigan that's been on eBay forever. Nobody wants it, but you list it on Depop and like cottagecore and granny style or like all the rage over there and it sells within it 24 hours. So it's a great way to try to maybe pivot to learn another platform. The important thing is to give yourself grace. <laughs> That's uh, like, be patient with yourself. It's so easy to be in a negative headspace just in life. And that's something as an adult, not just in my business, I have been trying really hard to unlearn. And for reselling, it's also like a lonely business as well. So you're gonna be your own worst critic. And so you're like, ah, oh, I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have done that. Well, try to say, okay, what can I learn from this experience? How do I not do this again? Is there a way I can still make this profitable? Let's go with that. Turning your way of thinking from a negative at fault, like the world is ending place is difficult. Turning it to a solution-based positive lesson <laughs> way of thinking is hard and I really feel like you're gonna be a lot happier as a reseller if you can find a way to give yourself that grace to do that. Learn from it, don't do it again, and move on. One of my favorite quotes is actually from a UFC fighter, uh, Glover Tejera, I think is how you pronounce his last name. I'll put it up here. And it's a play on Alexander Pope's to err is human, to forgive is divine. But his version is to err is human, but to persist in the mistake is ugly. That's really good <laughs> for someone who gets hit in the head for a living. And I really like that. Like, again, don't keep making the same mistakes expecting a better result. Learn from it, but it's okay. You're human, you're gonna make mistakes. And I just wanted, in case you needed that gentle reminder that it's okay, it's okay. I needed that reminder quite a bit when I was panicking <laughs> last week about looking at all those books. But I appreciate you all watching this video. I am very grateful that I have fixed my book problem, especially since I'm bringing even more stuff in from estate sales uh, that is going to be profitable. and. I will hopefully see you guys in the next video. And until then, bye. Hero, hero. I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the hero.